So clipping, clipping is an analog phenomenon in its origin. And I think so is saturation in a way, right? It, it was one of those things where two engineers were mixing and uh, one left the room and the other got too excited and all the levels went way up. And when the other engineer came back, the engineer said, uh, look, you're look, you know, you're look at the board. All the all the meters are going crazy. You're overloading and distorting everything. But then they looked at each other and they're like, but it sounds amazing. Right. It was one of those lucky mistakes, just like sticking all the ratio buttons in in 1176 because someone scooted their chair back and hit it with their elbow. And so they said, you know, you put chocolate in my peanut butter, you put peanut butter in my chocolate. Oh, it's perfect together. It's one of those. It was, I'm sure, unintentional. I always say it's a little bit like whoever invented toast. You know, they they warmed up the bread too long and then they're like, you ruined it. And then they're like, no, it's crunchy and sweet and amazing. Well, clipping is the same thing. When you overdrive analog equipment, you, you keep pushing into it, you keep pushing into it, but it has its limits. And when you overdrive it, it starts to flatten out the transient. And a little bit of clipping is a little bit of clipping. And a lot of clipping is a lot of clipping. And where you need to end up is your decision, of course, right? But this definitely came from overdriving uh, tape machines. So there's sort of tape inspired clipping, overdriving consoles. So that's sort of, you know, uh, input transformer clipping. Uh, there's even output transformer clipping, believe it or not. There's a couple of those instances. There's tube clipping. There's all anything that was analog that you could overdrive. There's a, there's a clipping for it. And I got hip to clipping in the 90s. Uh, in New York City, the 1890s. We used to ride our horses to the studio and uh, go work on music. And we, you know, we did it all. We did recording and we did mixing and production and we also did mastering. And we used to compare our masters to the masters from the really fancy mastering houses. And they were able to make it louder but also a little smoother. And we had an, a real ATR-102 and we had a real Sontech EQ and we had all everything real. And we had DCS converters that cost $6,000 for stereo pairs. We had all that, but we knew that we were missing something. And so when we looked at some of the masters, we would analyze them and we'd zoom in. We would see that they were flat topped, that the tops were chopped off somehow, but it didn't sound square wave and clicky and distorted. It sounded smooth and it actually created a little bit more headroom so that those spiky peaks were not distorting um, anything that came after it. And so it made it smoother and louder. And we were like, okay, <clears throat> so this clipping thing is a thing. And so what, what these uh, engineers were doing were they were just recording, they would go through their fancy analog chains and they would come back into the digital realm through their A to D converters. And on purpose, they would overdrive them so that the little clipping lights would light up. They wouldn't smash them unless it was smashing pumpkins or whatever. Maybe certain kinds of rock, you could smash it and just create a smash. But for dance music and hip hop and urban and pop, um, they were lightly clipping. So we tried lightly clipping our fancy DCS converters. It sounded okay, but it wasn't exactly right. And a lot of, back in the day, a lot of those mastering houses were using prism converters. And we did a shootout between prism and DCS. We chose DCS, but we discovered these things. Prism Sound, and we're at Vintage King website here made they they had a, a a soft knee overkiller soft clipper uh circuitry built into their a to d converters and we're like that's the little bit of this little missing link here this little eight percent that we have to make up so they also made these 
simple barrels and you would plug in your left and right XLR channels into these. And then these would go into your converters, into the left and right input of your converter. And they would do soft clipping. So we bought these barrels and, and, and prism converters were $12,000, but these barrels were cheap, you know? And so, and made by prism, same circuitry in a little thing. So, so we got these and we stuck them in front of the ADD converter. And all of a sudden we were able to soft clip musically and all of our mastering projects lived happily ever after. Isn't that a beautiful story? Isn't that like a, that's like a mastering bedtime story. So, so now we get to, we get to the modern digital age and people are seeing that, that digital as, as much as we love digital, sometimes it captures too much, right? It captures it, things too perfectly. And whereas if you kind of drove your analog stuff a bit hard, it would do its own little soft clipping built in. When you don't, when you record digital with really good headroom, you end up with some spiky transient things that are non-musical, but they cause distortion and they hurt your ears and they make things, they keep things quiet because those little, those little spiky peaks can clip plugins, but they're not giving you any power in return for what they, what they are. So, you know, I always use the analogy that, you know, when I, when you first, when I first got like HD TV or whatever, and I'm watching movies and like I, I lost the plot of the movie because I was focused on like some skin blemish on the lead actor that I'd never seen before. And it was distracting. And, you know, where too much information, too much resolution can sometimes distract from the point of the art. And if you look back at if you look at black and white photography or black and white film, the so, sometimes a little bit of the smoothing is what gave it the character, right? So this is a perfect analogy for what we're going to be doing with clipping is that it creates, when, when done correctly, it creates a smoothing and a cleaning up of some spiky, non-musical information. And it does it in a very unique way. So this is why we're here. Okay, so... If we let's let's do this. So so as per our the way we curate and organize our tools, we have two kinds of clippers in, in that have been accepted into our family of plugins. And there's lots of clippers out there. There's a lot of people who are are doing this. But once people saw that we were sort of in this digital realm, they're like, "Where's my clippers?" And people started making clippers. And the early ones, to be honest. Uh, were not good enough to use, but people stuck with it. And now some of the uh, clipping plugins are really, really good. So the, the two plugins that we have in our school, we, we have, we, all of our stuff comes in two flavors, right? Technical and musical. So our technical clipper, and there's a few of them out there, but really, and my favorite is Pro L2. Who knew that it was also a clipper, right? Nobody knew, or some of you knew. Okay, not, not Paul, good, oh, good. Always learn something when you come to class. So our technical clipper of choice is Pro L2, and we'll get into that in a second. Our musical clipper of choice is K-Clip 3. And the fact is, is that when the first K-Clip came out, it was like a good idea that wasn't quite refined yet. It wasn't ready for the world, but they kept working on it and they really did a lot of really wonderful, interesting things. And it's really, really good now. It is very different than a technical clipper. It's a vibey analog saturated clipper. And it's very similar to another plugin that we use that we've sort of been doing analog style clipping for a long time. What plug am, am I referring to here? Yes, decapitator, right? What does it mean to chop something's head's head off? It means you're decapitating it. 
And so what uh, Ken at Sound Toys realized is that a big part of cool analog sound was overdriving these preamps and getting a little bit of soft clipping with your saturation. So our musical tools typically have very few controls, but have a lot of analog feel to them and they have saturation. So that's K-Clip 3. Our technical tools are quite the opposite. Um, they have a lot of control and they have no saturation. Between these two sets of tools and, and the combination of the two, if you're feeling like that, you can get the kind of clipping that you are looking for. Now, when we started first playing with Pi and Auto Align and Phase Management, a lot of people were like, I don't hear this. I'm sorry. I'm trying, not trying to be rude, but I don't hear this. And so phase correlation, what we went to do is we started to do our synesthesia thing, which is let's align what we see with what we hear so that you can do the ear training to start to get the oral vocabulary of what good phase management is. And, and the same thing is the tr true for DSing. And the same thing is true for clipping. Um, <clears throat> at first, when people start to DS, they're like, I don't hear this. And then as you get more handy with the DSer and you spend more quality time with it, you do start to hear the difference between something that's DS and something that's not DS. And the same, same with the phase management tools. You start to hear the difference and become very sensitive to weird phase issues that probably never bothered you six months before you opened up that, that little box, right? And that, that big box of knowledge. So, so clipping is the same. It's, it, you may hear it today. The most important thing is that you go and try to do clipping on your own and spend some time with it. Not when you're in a rush and you, you know, you're cooking dinner and bouncing the baby on your knee and mowing the lawn and doing your taxes. Don't like shut everything off and, and don't try to finish a song that day. Just try to over a course of days and a course of weeks, start to be able to hear the difference between something that is properly clipped and something that is, that needs some clipping, frankly, and something that's too clipped. This and I know there's all kinds of artificial intelligence taking over the planet, and that's is what it is. And there's probably a couple of good things there, but this is not that. There, there is no auto perfect clipping setting algorithm, and there never will be. So yeah, needs clipping is something you should hear. Yes, yes, yes. Spiky transients that are edgy and also where it sounds weak, you know, where it sounds weak because of those transients. So you set in a deesser takes a very light hand. Too little deessing, what are you doing? You're not getting any deessing love. Too much deessing, you make it dull and actually give people who didn't have a lisp before your deessing, now they have a lisp. <clears throat> not enough clipping, you're not doing anything. You're you're pretending you're clipping but you're not clipping. Too much clipping, you're distorting things and you're flattening out the sound. If you clip just right, it should sound more powerful and also cleaner and also smoother. I'll say that again. When you're clipping just right, it's very subtle. But just like many subtle things that we do, it's accumulative. And if you go, if once you start to get a feel for this, you go back to one of your old sessions. And you just spend a day properly, gently, delicately, sensitively clipping lots of different things. And you compare those mixes, you'll see what it is. It's cleaner. It's easier on the ear. It's more powerful. And it may sound familiar to you because there used to be a lot of clipping built into just regular old analog processing. Okay. so. What kind of things would be clipped? What kind of things would not be clipped? Uh, kick drums, individual ones, light clipping is gold. Snares, yes. 
hi hats, maybe. Um, acoustic guitars, yes. Uh, uh, synth leads, yes. Uh, electric guitar leads and rhythms, yes. White noise, no. Pads, probably not. Vocals, l- lightly. And or in as a sound design thing. I don't have that list written down, but maybe I'll put that in your cheat sheet. I owe you a few cheat sheets. I know that. So not and and the whole mix in mastering, as we said, as we started this session, also gets clipped, right? So you're going to be when we get to mastering in the summer, we're going to be doing some clipping of stems, clipping of drum stems, but also we're going to lightly clip the whole mix, and it gives these qualities that we just discussed. Okay, all right. So let's look at Pro L to here for a second. This is our technical clipper. Technical clipper meaning that it has lots of control and no saturation. It has some analog personality. Those come from these the style menu. Um, but, uh, but this is not a saturator. This is a clean HD clipper as opposed to the K clip, which is going to saturate and be more analog. Okay. So if we go back into the presets and here's all the new pro L2 presets and there's all these good ones, right? But if we go back to pro L1 precepts, look, here's the old version one preset folder. Here's acoustic and look, baba, clipping, clipping, three different clipping algorithms by different friends of fab filter uh one is called almost clipping one is called clipping one is called clipping with linked initial transient and we'll get to all that fancy stuff let's go to clipping just to see what the people at fab filter think is happening when they're clipping no 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 exactly but you know what i use paul we can't use presets for this stuff but i always go through the presets to see what people who know the plugin really well thought was cool uh, yeah, I, I kind of do a little, uh, you know, a forensic retro engineering thing, and I don't use them. Recon, thank you. All right. So I know there's a lot of things to notice here, but what do you notice right away if you look carefully at some of the parameters here for this clipping? Right. Attack and release. Beautiful. Thank you. This attack is all the way slow, not turned off, but all the way slow. And the release is all the way fast. Let's look at the next clipping preset. That's called clipping. Here's clipping with length initial transient. Look, same thing. Here's another clipping one. Almost clipping. Same thing. So what, so what this means is, is that when you overdrive this in clipping mode, it's going to chop the head off of the transient. What would happen if the attack was all the way fast? It would catch the transient, exactly. And and with the little elf with the finger would pull it down and make a little shape. That's not what we want here. We want want it sort of chopped off almost like the double-decker bus in the James Bond movie going through the low bridge where the chop, the whole top of the bus gets cut off, right? I know I'm dating myself here, but I'm a good date. Um, all right. So, so we see this is important for setting this up for clipping. Now, if you hover over here, hover, you'll see this little control station, for lack of a better word, pop up with all these little, little controls. It's hiding from you, and it pops up when you hover. If you click on it like that, it stays. Here's a couple things, and we're not going to get into a totally exhaustive walkthrough today, but enough to get started with this. There's a DC offset, correct? Cool. There's a sidechain button. But here is also, there's two things that we're going to look at use today. Here is a one-to-one unity limiting gain compensation button. Turn that on. Back in the day, if anyone remembers, we used to hold down the option key while we were a driving and pushing gain into the limiter. And it would automatically 
turn down the output so we could hear the limiting without the increase in overall uh, loudness. So now this is so dope. We don't have to do that anymore. Now with this on, I can push into more and more and more limiting and it compensates in real time the output so I can just hear the quality of the sound without the, it getting louder. And it, then when we bypass, it also compensates so I can hear before and after. So, so let's do this. I'm, I'm in clipping mode. And if you look at these different clipping algorithms, they change the style, right? These different styles. Are these different styles different forms of saturation? No. Yes, no, no, they're not. What are they? What are they? They're elves. Say more, Paul. What are they? Are they different shapes of the attack and release envelope? Is that what they are? Yeah, that's what they are. Some are going to pull it down fast and let it go slow. Some are going to pull it down slow, let it go fast. So there's all kinds of different uh, nonlinear behaviors. Uh, no, it's for any limiting. One-to-one -one is for any limiting. Once you do this, you're going to be like, where have you been all my life? You one-to-one -one gain compensator. So every, yeah, any kind of limiting, it's your friend. So. So now we have a bunch of these different attack and release shape algorithm, personality program dependent things that they've cooked up to have analog personality without the saturation. So the ones I like are transparent, dynamic, and modern. If you were on a desert island and you could only, and, and your switch broke and you couldn't fix it, you would hope it would break on modern. Start on modern. Transparent's a little brighter. Dynamic is a little darker. Modern is, is really a good starting place. Okay. So let's go here and let's go here. Uh, all right. So now let's, let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. We're zooming in. Do you see those nasty, hairy hairs sticking up? These little spiky hairs. Can everyone see those in orange? Can you see those? Aren't those gross? Look at that skinny thing. Ew, right? Look at these, look at this stuff. And digital captures everything, even things you don't want. Off with his head, no. Tristan, just a light haircut today. Just a light haircut. No, we're not, we're not, if we're not taking it back to, to the to the tower in England. Not yet. Um, it, we are picking on them. <laughs> well, look, there's good transients and there's pesky little mosquito gnat transients. Can you see those? Aren't those? Ew, they're gross. Okay. So now this is what we're going to shave off. And Tristan, we will cut off some heads. Um, but, but today we're giving really gentle haircuts. That's what we're starting with. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna turn on Fab Filter. We're gonna make sure we're in modern mode. We feel good about that. We have the slowest attack, fastest release. So we're in clipping mode. We have our one to one on. Now I'm going to attempt to lightly cut off those hairy little things, but the first thing I'm going to do is also overdo it. So you can hear what too much is. And as you know, anyone who took mixing foundations, we always tend to overdo it right away to be like, what is too much? Let me hear what too much is. So let's, let's, let's do. Okay, let's try to set some nice clipping and just like limiting. So, and, and what we're doing is we're going to use this little, this little um, history meter showing the history of the clipping. 
and we're going to try to lightly clip. It is from our testing and test kitchen. It seems like if you want a transparent clipping, one to two dB of clipping seems to be about right. Do you see? It's pretty hard to see, I bet. But do you see this little minus two up here in, in the in the gain reduction window? OK, so this is where you can keep an eye on it. So let's try to do some light clipping. So that's light clipping. And do you, do you see what this beautiful one-to-one -one limiting is doing? How I can just play with any level and it compensates the gain? That's dope. That's, we didn't have that back in the day. That's good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to bypass on and off this light clipping and you're going to be honest with me and you're going to tell me if you can hear the difference. Can hear the difference but it's subtle but it's more clear exactly it's more clear and be honest it's fine no we're honest we'll have honest people not really is totally cool i think you're gonna have to do it in your own environment and i think you may have to do it for an hour walk away come back and do it for an hour it, it, yes it's a little bit brighter but it's not it's also a little stronger it's not as weak now um uh, uh, yes. And it also, but it is an ear training thing. It is an ear training thing. Just like phase was just like DSing is, this is an ear training thing. You're going to have to train your ears and, and, and really sweeter. Yeah. You're going to have to, you're going to have to spend some quality time with this. Now want to see something else. That's amazing. Watch this. You want in the new pro L2, we can listen to what they call the Delta. So the delta is, is, is subtracting the process signal from the unprocessed signal so we can hear exactly what is being affected. This is going to probably, um, uh, it can happen anywhere. You, 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 you'll, you'll hear the lows get stronger and the highs get smoother. You'll, you'll, you'll hear both in the mids too. So now... If I solo the delta and I push up this gain slider, which pushes, shoves the sound up against this limiter, listen to what we're remedying in the signal. Click the delta and watch. Can every, everyone hear those nasty little static clicky things? Can, I, can you hear that? Isn't that crazy cool? That's what we're taking off the signal. D-click is going to look for a different, RX is going to look for a different kind of, of clicking. This is, 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 yeah, digital clicking. This is, this is taking an overall approach and giving the signal a haircut. But this is what allows us now, this is what you're doing. That's that yucky, nasty, hairy, spiky stuff that you're removing from the signal. Now that you can hear it, isn't it more like, ew, right? Isn't it more now like, I can see why this stuff is not my friend. Listen to the sound of that.
And this is part of the ear training. So now I'll take it out of Delta mode and I'll just try to set it by ear too. And then we'll check the Delta. I'll, first, I'll set it without the Delta just by ear. But that's a really nice way for you to see like, am I doing too little? Am I doing too much? Am I doing anything? So I think that's a cool um, setting right there. So that's, that's my, that's my light mature clipping thing. So let's do, let's look at what we've done here and compare a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this track. I'm going to change the color from this beautiful nectarine color to the spring green color. These are the same. Now I'm going to do a little, Cubase centric trick. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to do direct offline processing, which is going to render this plugin to this track so we can see this the change in the waveform. So if I if I highlight the track and I open up the direct offline processing, all I have to do is drag this Pro L over here and boom, bada bing. It's done. Pretty cool, right? And I get all my DSP back and I can now bypass this. So now, and I'll, I'll bring up the gain of this a little bit so we can compare waveforms. So now, so now we get to see the before and after. If I zoom in and make it a little bit bigger. And we zoom in a little bit more, not too much. Um, can everyone see the flattening off of the peaks? Here's the old peak. Here's a new peak, right? It's not completely flattened, but if we, and that's the smoothing. Exactly. A little bit of clipping did all that. Yes, exactly. And now if we, we zoom in and we were, you know, we didn't go crazy. We can see that these it's more flat topped. It's not completely flattened off, and we can do that if we want to, but it's smoothed out. This see these these spiky, hairy little things? We gave it a little haircut. Right? And and those spiky things now have gone away. And so they're not assaulting our ears. We can turn up the signal more. It's smoother, it's cleaner, it's clearer, and it's lightly clipped. Does everyone follow that? Isn't that cool? Now, if you can't hear it today, don't worry about it. I, you, you will need to really do exactly what we did, and then you will get you know, a, a sonic vocabulary for, for what this is. All right, let's clip something else real quick let's, while, we're, we're, while the clipper's hot. Let's go to, let's go here. So now let's zoom in. Let's just take a look at the waveform a little bit. Not as many spiky, crazy things, but there's some weird spiky stuff here still. Okay. So let's go here. Let's go to, let's put in a fresh Pro L2. Um, let's go to clipping mode. We got modern, that's cool. Slowest attack, fastest release. Let's click here and make it stick. We got our one-to-one -one. and uh, let's do some clipping.
And it's that simple. So let's do the same thing as we did last last time. Let's let's uh, duplicate this track. It's processed, and we'll zoom in. And we can already see we did more clipping on this one, right? This is the unclipped. This is the clipped. This is an even more visually obvious difference. Can you see that? See how this was is much more flat topped and flattened out. And now this one sounds like this. And it might be a little too clipped, which is back to my point, which is too much clipping sounds a little crunchy and distorted, which could sound really cool in terms of like a sound design thing. But, but for the most part, you want light transparent clipping, just like you want light transparent de-essing. Same, same concept. Does everyone follow this workflow? Is this all making sense? Okay, good. Okay, so this is a very good question. Where would this go in the chain? I think typically it goes last or right in front of the limiter. That's where it sounds the best. Something because it, it, there's something about clipping too early that, and, and I have to think about philosophically why, but, but from our, all of our testing, you can clip early and that in a weird way would emulate what would happen in an analog studio. It would come into the ADD converter and that would be the, the clipping. And then you would, you tweak it from there, but it seems like clipping works right at the end of the chain to clean up any spikiness that may also have been induced by the other channel strip plugins. So you could either, do your limiting and then clip it as the final thing or clip it right in front of a limiter. Those seem to be the two best things you can mix into it. Sure. But um, the thing is getting the thing lightly clipped does sort of require that the signal's not moving up and down and up and down and up and down a lot of you. So I would save it for mastering. Actually Um, I would, do individual clipping on kicks, snares, leads, acoustic guitars, bongos, congas, synth leads, arpeggiated synths, anything that feels piano is more of a rounder sound. I think basses are also a little rounder. You could try it. Uh, more things with spiky transients. Those are the real candidates. But you could do light, gentle clipping on lots of things, I think. And, and I think it could be very beneficial. It's, this, it's this, a mandolin all day. All day. Banjo. Anything with spiky transients, it's your friend. But you don't have to clip your pads, right? Probably not. It, it's, it's, it's things when you zoom in, you see those spikes. It, this, is, this, is, this is the smooth maker. and. Drums obviously being the, the, the biggest candidate, but acoustic guitars is great. And electric guitar is great. You know, the sound has to sort of be contained for you to kind of hone in on the sweet spot of the clipping. If the dynamic range is really extreme all over the place in the track, it's hard for you to fine tune that light clipping setting. Does that make sense? Which is why I think it's also nice for it to live later in the chain because then the sound is more contained. <laughs> Most percussive things, absolutely, absolutely. And you want to do it so that it's transparent, right? You want to do it when, when you get your clipping right, it should sound cleaner and clearer and stronger. Less is more or the right amount is the right amount, right? And, and it will take a little bit of practice. Really, take, take any old tr- tracks and see if you can get it so when you bypass in and out that it sounds cleaner. S- practice it. All right, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Have a safe weekend. I will see everyone next week for K-Clip. Cheers. Cheers.